Hey friends, welcome to today's video. Today is gonna to be the greatest day of your life. What would you do in the last hour of your life? Where would you be? Who would remember it? You know, I'll be honest, my memory of 9-11 is foggy at best. I do remember the day I was in Omaha, Nebraska, and I was had seen a news account that a, a plane had hit one of the Twin Towers I found it a little bit hard to believe, I think, and I called the local news radio station, 1110 KFAB in Omaha, and I asked them, did a plane just hit the Twin Towers? And the gentleman who answered the phone was kind, and he said, uh, yes, that, that has actually occurred. And then I heard somebody in the background say, holy rhymes with the word hit. Um, another plane has hit the other tower. And the guy said, I'm sorry, I have to go. And he hung up the phone on me. And uh, it was a crazy day after that. I tell you what, you never knew what was going on. Was the United States under attack? But um, as I got older and as I've gotten older, I've understood that there are so many paths we can take as we remember 9-11. You know, the memories of the innocent lives lost in the towers, the heroism of the first responders, you know, some of them who gave their lives so that others that day could survive. And the need to recognize those affected by the war ignited when the plane struck the Twin Towers. You know, the sense of unity that was felt across the country, I don't think I've seen anything since. And it deserves proper remembrance. You know, one account in particular has always stuck with me. And that was the story of Wells Crowther a.k.a. the man in the red bandana. And you may know this story, but I'm going to tell it again today. You know, if you were to search for um, either Wells Crowther or the man in the red bandana on YouTube, it would pull up some of the most somber yet hauntingly beautiful and inspirational videos on the Internet. You know, one of which um, is going to be this one here as I post, post this today. <laughs> Um, for those unfamiliar with the story, um, though it's a short story, I'll just uh, give you a short summary. I'm not going to be able to do it complete justice, but Wells was a Boston College lacrosse player and a volunteer firefighter who eventually went to work as an equities trader in the World Trade Center. Um, Crowther was known for the red bandana he wore under his sports jerseys a signature flourish given to him by his father at the age of six. Now, after United Airlines Flight 175 struck the South Tower, Crowther eventually made his way to the Sky Lobby on the 78th floor, where he found a group of survivors. Now, he carried one woman on his back, he funneled them to the only working stairway, leading them down 17 floors to safety. At that point, Wells had certainly done more than enough. He went back up. Okay. Well, this sucks. I'm not even going to get through this video. Now I'm going to cry. So... But I want to tell this story. Um, so, <clears throat> so finding another group of survivors, Crowther put out fires and gave first aid before leading a second group downstairs and at this point he was already a hero but he went back up and Crowther was last seen with members of the New York City Fire Department just before the South Tower collapsed at 9.59 a.m. Great. Can I have a Kleenex? Uh, so 
So, all right. So, um, Wells' parents had absolutely no idea about the last few minutes of their son's life until I believe it was survivor Jeannie Wine uh, gave a first-hand account to the New York Times um, and described being saved by a man in a red bandana. And according to survivor accounts, as many as 20 people survived the attack because of Wells. After his death, a mostly completed um, New York City Fire Department application was discovered at his home. And as Crowell's father, Jefferson, said in an ESPN documentary, remembering his son, Wells' bandana instantly became a symbol of a symbol of absolutely the most purest form of compassion and love. Now, as a student in Boston, just a few subway stops from Wells College had said and they had seen him every year um, wearing his red bandana and the students at the university every year have a, a red bandana run in honor of his memory. And, you know, I know that many of you know this story. Sorry, I got so emotional. It's just so sad. I just, I don't understand the insanity of the day. And I, some people are just so cool. They're so good. Um, let this, I just think that, you know, for those of you that know this story, today should be a day to remember and a reminder of Wells's pure form of compassion, right? I mean, as always, we need to remember and honor those affected by the tragedy of 9-11. And, you know, other world events similar to this, we need to remember as well. Because if we don't remember the history, we're doomed to repeat it. You know what, above all, I hope that Wells' story has reminded you of the beauty of putting other people's needs before our own at the times when it may be more difficult than ever for us to do so. You know, and may we always have the compassion to do what's best for others, even when we ourselves may suffer. You know, may we always have the courage to turn around and go back up, right? Friends, I care about you. I hope you have a wonderful day. Sorry, I got a little emotional today, but it's a tough one, right? Have a great day, my friends. I'll be back tomorrow with some really good stuff.